Keep Rock alive and well. God bless you. I, by passing it along to the next generation of what real music sounds like, that's really something. Because we are here to take care of business tonight. Randy and the band are smoking hot. They played New Jersey last night. And Randy's the only person who has Spinal Tap stories for every great song that he has written. And you're going to hear those tonight, too. So I'm thrilled to catch up my old friend. You know what a Beatles fan he is. It's a great night of music. Thank you, everybody, for coming out to the beautiful theater for Westbury. God bless. We're going to have a great spring. We're going to have a great summer. And we are going to rock and roll Winnipeg style in just a few minutes.
so I hurried up right. take you on a musical journey of my life. I grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Yeah. Which is kind of like Liverpool in, in Canada in the mid-60s, early 60s. Uh, in our little town of Winnipeg, about 350,000 people, there was over 100 bands all playing. And some of the top bands, I was in one called Chad Allen and the Reflections. There was Burton Cummings and the Devrons. 
Fred Turner and the Rockin' Devils, and Neil Young and the Squires. Yeah. Channel and the Expressions, and we couldn't use that, there was a band called Expressions on Motown. And so we didn't have a name, but they wanted to release this record. They said, find a name, and while you do, we're going to send out a white label copy that says Shake It All Over Under, and then just say, guess who underneath? <laughs> signed with Scepter Records and recorded Scepter Studios. And Scepter Records was the home then of the Kingsmen. We got invited to do the Louie Louie tour in the summer of 65. And we show up, a bunch of punks from Winnipeg, Manitoba, and we go on a tour bus with Dion and the Belmonts, the Kingsmen, Barbara Mason, Eddie Hodges, the Turtles, Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. A dream come true. Except for one thing, our lead singer did not like it. He wasn't Chad Allen anymore. He was who's on first. Guess who you are. They'd say, what's the name of your band? we say, guess who? And they'd say, well, who are you? Or guess who? <laughs> Remember that happened to sell the thing, who's on first? He got sick of that. So we toured all summer long. It was great. We backed up the Shirelles, the Ronettes, the Crystals. We were kind of a backup band. And then we did our own. We had one hit, Shaking All Over. And um, when we got home, our lead singer said, I want to go back to school. He went back to University of Manitoba. And, but when we left Winnipeg, every other band moved up a notch. We were the tough band. So Burton and the Devrons moved up, Neil and the Squires moved up, Fred Turner and the Rock De Devils, they all moved up. So we get back to Winnipeg, our lead singer quits. So what do you do? My dad went to school with Rhoda Cummings, Burton's mother. I said to my dad, can you call Rhoda Cummings, see if I can meet with Burton? I'm going to steal him from the Devrons and get him to join the band. We can't break up. So that happened. Burton joined the Devrons, it was fantastic. I'm sorry, Burton joined the Guess Who? The Devrons broke up. If you can't beat the competition, you break them up. So I got together with Burton Cummings, and one day we went to Regina to do a couple of gigs, went to a Joni Mitchell concert. And after that, I met a woman who I decided to ask out the next day. When I went to pick her up at her house, she wasn't ready. I was ushered into a great big room with a piano and a plant and a couch. No television, no radio. I'm sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting. And I'm not really a player on the piano. My brother played accordion when he was little and he used to fool around on that. And I went over to the piano and I played this.
heard of that song here in New York City at a &R Studios with the great Phil Ramone being the engineer. And uh, it still sounds good on the radio to this day. So thank you for that song that was our first monster hit. A couple years ago I got invited by Neil Young's wife to his birthday party in LA at the Troubadour. He was turning 70. Can you believe that? Yeah. We're all lucky if we turn 70 someday. So I've known him since we were about 16, and he's Richie Rich, and he's got a barn full of cars and a barn full of trains and, and guitars and everything. What do you buy a guy who's Richie Rich? And uh, I'm stumped as to what to buy him for his 70th birthday party. And then I have an idea. When you're traveling across Canada, there's a Trans-Canada Highway, and there's a little side route you take us, Route 70, that takes you through Winnipeg. And there's a big sign with a big triangle, a big crest, with a 70 in it. And I thought, wow. That'd be great for his birthday present. <laughs> so how do I get that? I don't want somebody taking a picture of me stealing a sign from the highway. So I phone the city of Winnipeg, and I say, this is Randy Bachman, and my dad's Charlie Bachman, dad was an alderman there, so they knew who he was, so they said, uh, I'd like to get that sign with a big 70 on. They said, we don't sell signs to anybody. Like, why do you need that sign? This is for Neil Young's birthday. He said, okay. <laughs> so, so, they made this, they got the gigantic sign. And when you see it on the highway, it looks okay, but when they give it to you, it's about this wide across and this high, and it won't even go on, on in the baggage on the airplane. I had to take it on the airplane and put it in the closet with the stewardess in the front. So I get to LA, and I swear I write on it, hey Neil, happy 70th, been there and done that. And he's got the 70, he put that on his recording studio, it's still there to this day. So at his party, which is at the True Girl, which is really cool. So at his party is like all the people who used to play the True Girl, like Jackson Brown and, 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 and Carol King and people like that. And he says, how would you the, the night? A couple of my friends want to meet you. I say, who is that? He says, Graham Nash and Stephen Stills. Wow. So I say hi to Graham. I've known Graham for years when he was in the Hollies. And, uh, but Stephen Stills, I go, wow. So I meet Stephen Stills for the first time. And I'm, I'm a fan just like you guys are. So I go, Stephen, you are incredible. Thank you for such great guitar playing. Your duels with Neil in Buffalo Springfield on Down by the River, they're legendary 10-minute guitar solos and the way you play acoustic guitar and your voice and your songwriting are incredible. You've been a big influence on me. And he said, thank you very much. I said, you have no idea how many things I've stolen from you. <laughs> and he said, yes, I have. <laughs>
locked up, we all had a really rough time from they. Whoever they are, they spoil their lives. We couldn't go to church, we couldn't work out, we couldn't eat in a restaurant, we couldn't visit our family, we couldn't do nothing. It's great to get out, share this moment of all of us together. This is a moment in time. We'll never be as young as we are right now. Here's something we all have to do in the last couple of years, I dedicated to everybody. We've got to keep going forward with this. You gotta love yourself. Give yourself a hug. Yeah. Aren't you aren't we great? <laughs> then hug your loved one. Hug your kids. Hug your neighbor. Love everybody. And keep Thank on looking you. out. No for problem. Number one.
Thank you. So way, way, way back in the 60s, we got a call from Vancouver to do a gig there. What did he do? We see a real hippie. If there was none of them in Winnipeg, it was too cold. <laughs> we found out the hippies were over the bridge from San Francisco in Berkeley at the University of Southern California, Telegraph Avenue. We went over there and saw this guy who was on the cover of Rolling Stone, the peace sign on his bare chest, flowers in his hair, with his guitar open, and we got our picture taken with this guy. And I bought a bunch of vinyl to take to the trunk of my car. I'm too heavy to carry around. And um, as I'm walking down the side street to the trunk of my car, there's three guys coming at me, giving me the glare. Do you remember the beginning of Gunsmoke where Matt Dillon was at the street and you saw the gunfighter? Well, I'm at the front of the street, there's three guys at the other end. They're giving me this glare. They've got bulging muscles, tattoos, piercing. They look like war vets. So this is the late 60s, right? And I'm wearing a Canadian red maple leaf and a peace sign. <laughs> They're giving me this glare. And like, what am I going to do? It's either fight, f fight or flee, right? And uh, just as I'm deciding whether I'm gonna, how I'm going to flee, because I'm not going to fight these guys. Because the mayor said to us, when you get to the States, a Canadian never gets in a fight with an American. They're drafted at 18, taught hand-to-hand -hand combat. Unless you've got skates and you're on ice with a hockey stick, you won't have a chance, you won't have a chance in a fight with an American. So in the middle of all this, there's this noise, and this little brown car pulls up, and it's, it's a wreck put together, it's got a blue door, the bumper's hanging off, it's held on with a coat hanger, and these guys hear the noise of this car, the muffler's dragging on the ground, it's sparking. So these three macho guys are not macho anymore. They're not giving me the glare like we're gonna rip you apart. Two of them leave, and this poor one guy's standing there, and he shrugs and looks at me. He's left now all alone, and out of this car gets a woman about five feet tall and starts ripping on this guy. You're no good, bum. I know you're here with all your buddies, checking on all the chicks at the university down there in Telegraph Avenue. You're supposed to be looking out for, out looking for a job. And I don't mean sitting in a coffee shop reading the want ads. I mean looking for a job. You left me at home with the kids. You didn't take out the garbage when you left. This guy gets a whole laundry list of stuff. He shrugs and looks at me. She doesn't get in the car. He gets in the car and she slams the door and says, and when you get home, you ain't getting no sugar tonight. <laughs> FM radio just started and they got to play anything they wanted. There was no format yet. And FM radio used to be classical music. And now they're playing jazz and blues and they said, we're now going to play an album by a guy named uh, Robert Zimmerman from Hibbings, Minnesota. And he changed his name to Bob Dylan. This before I thought Bob Dylan could sing. So his first album was... So I'm listening to this, a whole side of this album. When it got to a song called Ballad in Plain D, he said these words when I wrote this song. She came undone.
City, Columbia Records, um, 25 years ago this year. So I wrote it about that girl in high school that we were all afraid to talk to. So we're going to try it tonight and sing along because I can't really sing the high note anymore. <laughs>
Anybody remember American Motors? They were on for a couple of years. Remember the Gremlin? The worst thing in the world was a purple Gremlin. Well, we had an American Motors ambassador station wagon that was just as bad as a Gremlin. So I'm driving, I'm with BTO, it's a station wagon, a bench seat, a bench seat, all the gear in the back, gear on the roof. Our license plate says, Friendly Manitoba. We're driving from Winnipeg to New Orleans to play Mardi Gras with ZZ Top and uh, Doobie Brothers. Yeah. And BTO, right? A big deal. As I'm on the freeway, I get behind a semi-trailer, and the speed limit then was 75. Behind this guy's going about 55. So I'm just about to pass him, and suddenly there's toot toot, and there's a, a semi right beside me, and I can't pass. The guy's in front, the guy's beside me. So I'm gonna drop way back, pull over to the left, and pass them all. And as I go to drop back, Two, two, there's, another, there's another guy behind me, so these three semi-trailers have me boxed in. They're talking to each other on their CB radios, and they're having fun playing cat and mouse with the friendly Manitobans, which is on our license plate, right? There's a bison, a buffalo, and then friendly Manitoba. And they're playing this little game. And so suddenly, the guy beside me pulls back a little, and there's a little gap that maybe I could get through. I'm driving. I floor the car. When you're Ford American Motors, nothing happens. It just goes <laughs> more rough, but it doesn't go. So I don't get out of this little gap, and they close it, and they're killing themselves laughing. I give them the 11th finger out of the window. They get really pissed off. They go about 35 miles an hour. We're trapped in these street trucks. Finally, one of them takes an exit to a truck stop. Wow. We need gas. We followed him off. Fred Turner and I are the big guys in BTO. There was four of us. Our t-shirt said half a ton of rock and roll. We were big guys. I thought we were big guys. When this trucker got out of his cab, he looked like a refrigerator with a head stuck on top. I'm six two I'm looking up at this guy, he's about six foot six. So our tone of voice changes. So I said, excuse me, sir. You're driving like a maniac. Maniac, you got us boxed in, we're just trying to get to our gig. We're just playing a game with you friendly Canadians, you friendly Manitobans, you polite Canadians. We want to see how polite you are. You're not very polite giving us the finger. Oh, yeah? I said, yeah, but you delayed us for our gig. He said, you know what? It's no big deal, buddy. Why don't you just let it ride?
you. So way, way back in classic rock, because you've got a lot of those albums, there's usually four songs on each side, about 20 minutes to go between the edge and the, and the label, or if you put too much, the sound goes down, because the, the grooves are thin. So you got to have eight songs on an album. We were doing the BTO third album, Not Fragile. We had a work song. And it had a jangly guitar and a heavy guitar, and it had no lyrics. But I wanted to sing something so we could do the song to get the sound on the bass and drums. I grew up with three brothers, and any of you who were like me, the oldest in the family, we had the same job of designated babysitter. <laughs> Parents would be going out and saying, okay, Rand, look after your three little brothers, play outside in the yard, we're going to visit Granny and Grandpa, we're going shopping. When the street lights come on, go in our house, jump into bed, put on your jammies and go to bed. Those were the safe old days. So having eight songs on the album, the head of our label flies in to hear the album, and he wants to hear something special. And I say, that's it, the album's got rolled on the highway, it's got sledgehammer, it's got all these songs on it, and he says, the engineer says, play him the throwaway song, because one of my brothers stuttered. So to tease my brother, I stuttered to this work song, and we drew, I was gonna mix one cassette and send it to my brother, like na 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 na, -na like a tease thing. And he listens to this song, and he says, put it on the album. I said, are you kidding? He said, no, I said, we've already got the eight songs. He said, I'll tell you what, get the four longest, we'll put it on one side, and we'll put the five shortest on the other side, the sides will be the same length within a minute. So we put it on the, on the, on the third album, the Fragile album, and it started to get played as a single. I went to number one in 22 countries. <laughs> About five days ago, I woke up to a text that came from a magazine in England called Tusk. They'd taken a survey in 30 countries, and the song that was voted the best rock and roll chorus of all time was You Ain't Seen Nothing Yet. <laughs>
thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I have a special request. Two requests. This is a special part of the evening where I would ask the great security guys here to chill a little bit. Because I've seen people getting up, dancing and singing, and this is our moment where we become the backup band. When you guys perform, we want to see you rock out. We're going to do what's called a jam. We're going to do one of our songs and put a whole bunch of classic rock in. We don't know what we're doing. We just sit in each other and start to play a song. And you guys sing along. The security guys will sing along and dance too, okay guys? <laughs> well, cool. This is your moment, audience.
Can you have a spin and then you tell me how party? We're supposed to leave, but there's nowhere to go. So thank you for uh, reading your writer in the contract. You came and gone and we come back. Thank you. You were a great audience. Thank you again for coming out. Isn't it great to get out of the house? Yeah. Lock the kids up and leave. We came here for one reason and so did you, to take care of our little business.
Thank you all, you great rock and roll audience. Yeah. PTO is back, tell everybody. I know we'll be here again. Some sunny morning. 